Okay, let's roll into our post race for tonight's an second annual Quaker State 400. Joining us right now is Casey Kane. And uh, Casey drove the number five Quaker State uh, Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Casey, uh, coming on strong there at the end. I know you wanted to get that win, but talk about your run out here this evening. Yeah, we had a, it would have been great to win in a Quaker State car, um, but we, we had a really good Quaker State uh, Chevy throughout the whole race. Um, yesterday in practice, I was worried, and uh, Kenny Francis and Keith Rodden made a, some really good adjustments. I felt, we felt like our teammates were pretty good, and um, so we looked at some of their things they were doing, and it's, it's nice to have as good of teammates as we have, so we were able to put a nice little package in the car, and it, it worked really well. We got behind, uh, a lap behind there, the loose right front, and then uh, we had another slow stop later. So the pit crew is really good at times, and uh, they're they're solid. We just got to keep working on it. We need just got to be a little, a little stronger throughout. But uh, my car was my car was fast, and um, I think the longer the run went, the the better we seemed to get. The better I could move around on the racetrack, anyways. Also joining us now is Denny Hamlin, and he drove tonight the uh, number 11 FedEx Express Toyota. And uh, Denny, talk about your run out here this evening. Oh, we had a good run. Um, yeah, our car was pretty good uh, through the middle stages of the race. And, uh, you know, we, when we lost the lead uh, with, you know, 70 to go or so, it, it seemed like uh, we immediately had to go into fuel save mode. And, uh, you know, our car started going back to, towards the lead. And uh, we came in, and once we did that pit stop, um, you know, we, we made a charge to the front, but uh, we knew we had to save fuel that entire last run. There was really nothing I could do. As much as I wanted to keep the two honest and run them hard, uh, I had to just run a certain pace, and that's all I was, you know, really allowed to do if we were going to make it to the end. So kind of anticlimactic for our day. You know, you, you spend all day working on your car and trying to get it uh, as fast as you can for the end of the run, and you can't run it <laughs> to its full potential. So that part of it is a little frustrating. Take questions now for either Casey or Denny. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll come to you with the microphone. We'll start right over here with Jared. Jared Breeze, NASCAR.com. Casey, you finished um, well. The whole Hendrick team finished well. It, how encouraging is that for you, knowing that you have to run well pretty much every weekend to make the chase? And is a top five finish good enough at this point in the season? I mean, uh, yeah, top five is good. Uh, probably not going to get us in the chase. I think we need to win a race or or two more in order to, to make the chase probably. But um, to see how well the Hendrick cars are right now is, I mean, that's, it's great to see. It's great to be part of that. And uh, all the guys should be really happy because they have uh, they prepare some pretty nice cars. And our engines run great. Uh, you know, it's just it's nice to, to be part of that organization. Other questions? Denny Hamlin's now moved up to fifth in the points. Other questions for either Denny or Casey? Go right here. Yeah, what for either one of you uh, or both of you? Which part of the track was working the best? Because it looked like some cars were starting to run high while others stayed low. For me, I just uh, I had to run the bottom the uh, first probably 20 laps. I couldn't. As soon as I'd get off the bottom, I'd just slide four wheel slide. So I didn't. Couldn't make it work. I kept trying the outside, and then later on, I was able to make a little bit of speed on the outside at both corners, both ends, uh, and could still run the bottom pretty well. But uh, for probably the first half of the run, I had to be on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. You just kind of move around wherever your car seems to work. Um, you know, the tires just didn't drop off like you would hope that they would. Um, you know, I, I think the Goodyear needs to reevaluate the tire that they have here and get us something a little bit softer. Uh, so it falls off, so there's more passing. Because uh, right now, uh, during green flag runs, it's just you catch someone, and it's it's very, very hard. And, you know, we ran left side tires for, gosh, almost probably 100 laps on lefts uh, and, and still just nowhere. So, um, you know, once, once yeah, I talked to Goodyear, and they said they're going to probably change it coming back. So should should have some, uh, some better racing when we come back here. Let's go right here to Jared and then up to Rusty. Denny, you said you were a little disappointed with how your car finished tonight, but still you had a top five run and you got a new deal to boot. What kind of a day for for you has it been in general? Uh, a great day. I mean, you know, when 
when you know you're locked in and and know you're going to race where you're going to race for a really long time and and honestly uh people uh at joe gibbs racing and fedex have your back for a really long time it's a it's a good feeling and so um you know we're really blessed to, to have the partnership that we all have and uh you know i know that uh you know those guys have given me a championship winning team uh, a team that is capable of winning a championship and that's all i can ask for um and so it's up to us to, to get that done from here on out and now that it's all settled, you know, it's, it's just been a, a good day, and now you kind of can breathe easy. <clears throat> Let's go Rusty right here front row, and then we'll go to the press box. Go ahead, Rusty. Uh, Casey, you made a good late run. Was there a, did you think all along that you could catch Brad, or was there a stage where you thought, boy, he's really making good time? I just hoped he'd run out of gas. I didn't. Uh, There's no way I was catching him. We were, we pitted, so we had enough gas to run as hard as I could all the way to the finish and I was hoping he'd, his would shut off off at two or something. Press Fox questions for Denny or Casey. Go ahead. Sports for Denny Hamlin. Um, has the FedEx seal been done as well and, and if so, how many years is that for you? Um, I, I don't know um, about theirs in particular. I just know about mine. Um, but it's a, it's a long time. Really long time. Is the FedEx deal done? I mean, has that part of the contract been signed, or or just your contract with Joe Gibbs? Um, mine with Gibbs. Um, I you know I really don't know where uh, FedEx stands um, with Gibbs, but um, you know I think that uh, you know they're talking, so they should. Uh, everything should be done. I, I'm me FedEx and and Joe Gibbs. Hopefully, we'll all be together for a really long time. Let's stay in the press box. Go ahead, please. Uh, Brad Stevens, the Owensboro Messenger Inquirer. Denny, last year you were pretty outspoken about some of the traffic problems, some of the kind of logistical problems that surrounded this race. How happy were you to see this kind of go off with that hitch tonight and go a lot better? I mean, you're 50 50. Uh, traffic problems mean crowd problems. So, um, you know, that, uh, you know, we, I don't think that they had as many people here this time around, which, understandable, the heat probably deterred some but still a, a very solid crowd out here tonight. Um, it, it's good, you know, any improvement that they can make to the facility uh, is gonna be better. Um, you know, I know Bruton's put a lot of effort into the traffic issues and I uh, spent a lot of money working on it. So, I, at, truth be told, it's gonna be told uh, tonight, you know, in these next three hours, uh, just, you know, seeing how it flows out. Stay in the press box, go ahead, please. Uh, Lee Spencer with the NASCAR Wire Service. Casey, um, the only thing we knew about was the loose wheel, but on, on the post race, I think you referred to two mistakes on pit road. Exactly what happened? I don't know what the other one was. I never asked. I just, uh, we came in with a certain group of cars and went out to, and I couldn't see that group. So they're, you know, full straightaway and obviously into the next corner. And I was sitting there on the jacks for a while. So it was, uh, I'm not sure what happened, but there was, there was two stops where it, it just slowed us up. and. Like I said, I, my pit crew is solid. They're a really good group of guys. They work as hard as anyone, probably harder than everyone or most. And um, we just had a couple of bad stops. And when it, as hard as it is to pass here and as long as the, the green flags run or go, runs were going and things, you just, if you're losing a ton of time on pit road, you'll never catch up. Back downstairs questions, Bob. Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. Uh, for both of you, uh, Brad was one of the guys who said that the sway bar rules changes could have been a, would be a game changer. So I don't know what he'll say when he comes in here, but I'm curious if you all thought it impacted what you all were doing in your races. It didn't impact us, maybe them. <laughs> I felt pretty good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I hear Jared. Denny, tell me a little bit about uh, all the Hendrick cars ran well. The Gibbs cars were all running well early, but didn't seem like you know Kyle Busch has been snake bit lately, and, and Joey ran into a problem too. How how frustrating is that to see that your teammates are struggling? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's tough. I mean, you're you know, you want everyone running up front as 
most as, as much as possible uh, because that's the more information you can use uh, when when they do have problems and things like that you can pretty much throw away all that data from from that point forward um, from that point on but it, you know it's tough you know they're all having their separate issues and things that are going on and engine stuff and you know wrecks and things like that so that's very frustrating but law of averages should all work out I mean you know we had a really good run at the beginning of the season and then two straight DNS and so I think everything kind of works out in, in cycles and so you know those guys are just in, in a bad one right now um, you know I'm not sure what happened to Kyle it looked like he ran out of gas uh, off the turn two I saw him you know shaking his car so once you get back in traffic here uh, you can have the best car uh, in the world and, and you're just not going to make up any ground uh, you'll pass one or two cars but you're not just going to charge to the front uh, like you would at other racetracks.